Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Conrad, how are you? Man, better than I deserve and almost as good as buttsandseatscomic.com. We recently launched that Kickstarter for your new graphic novel, and uh, the goal over the next 30 days was to raise $20,000 and as you and I are recording that, well, you've done more than four times that. Yeah. You're well past $80,000 at this point. The support, in a word, has been overwhelming. Fair to say? It's been shocking. It's been humbling. And it's been, I guess, four times as much. Conrad, I didn't even think, I didn't think we'd reach 20,000. And you know how, you know how I am. I just... It's not that I, I don't, it's not that I don't have any confidence in fans, which I do, but it's that I just didn't think, well, I, I, I do, as you know, and I'm, I'm sincere about this and I think you would agree. I, I never have seen myself as a star, right? I've always seen myself as a jabroni. I wanted the name of the comic to be I jabroni because then they say, why do you want that? I said, because, well, I'm someone that puts people over. That's what I do. And they talk, talked me into butts in the seats, butts in seats. So, so here we are at $80,000 on, on Kickstarter. And we have until the 16th of April to finish it up. So we are basically over almost two weeks in and look at us. Yeah, actually, Amazing. as you and I are recording this, you know, we're, we're a weekend. A weekend. Okay. And, and by the time everyone hears yeah. this, yeah, the, the, right. we'll, we'll be two in, but just to peek behind the curtain, you and I are getting ahead because, mm -hmm. well, the clock is ticking on the WWE network and right now it's still working for both of us. Yeah. Now a little birdie has said that, uh, some fans have decided to take to the internet and try to keep this thing going as long as possible. So uh -huh. if your network has stopped working and uh, FYI, it has stopped working on my Apple TV. I'm watching on my computer right now, and it's still working there. So try something like that. But if that doesn't work, uh, a few of our super fans have taken to YouTube to help mm -hmm. us out. We have super fans. We have uh, super people. That's that's one you know, great thing that we have done, uh, I, I think, and I think you would agree, uh, during the course of these five uh, going on six seasons. Wow. Is this something, uh, w one thing that we have done, we have built a community of, yes. uh, of not, we call them fans because they're fans, but they're like us. They're our friends. So they're fans. And we've met some great people. We've met some weird people. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> yes. Hello, bad money slim. Uh, and, um, and Carl Mandick. Woo. Uh, but we've met some great people, Paul Bromwell, who's, and, and people who's help us out on ad free shows. But further than that, just. When, when I go out and say, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a zoom call 
and we have we have a lot of people who flock to that, want to talk to me. They do the same thing on ad free shows uh, when I'm on there or when Eric's on there, or Arn or whomever. So we've built a community, and I think it's great. And you need to you need to be uh, given credit for that for uh, putting us all together because it's been fun. It's been fun for you and me as much as it's been for everybody out there who tunes in. Well, I'm, uh, I've had a blast working with you and I'm so glad to see that fans are really rallying behind you to support this project. And if you'd like to get more information and see what, uh, is available for you to sort of grab your piece of history, because there is a lot of cool stuff happening at that website, butts and seats, I mean, you, you can get all kinds of different collectibles depending on, you know, what your donation level is and your level of support. And I got to think with wrestling collectibles, just going absolutely nuts the way they are, there's probably an opportunity for some of this stuff to go up in value, uh, which is something I can't believe we're even saying out loud, but have you seen the wrestling collectibles market lately, Tony, do you ever just go over to eBay and check out what's happening over there? Or is that not something you normally do? No, it's not something I do. I, I do know this. Uh, we were in Jacksonville a couple of times outside of the and you need to you need to guide me on this a little bit. Sure. Out, outside of uh, the hotel and at the airport, there are these guys who have figures, rings, and they always ask guys to sign them. Right. I sign them. I don't have a problem with it. A lot of a lot of guys won't because they know what's going on. They're selling them and making money off of them. But I've always said, yeah, okay. So I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. I. I, I've never had a problem with that. Of course, <laughs> I've never been this popular either. So, uh, I mean, I was going to the Jacksonville airport and a couple of guys had these rings that they had me sign. And then I walked a little bit further and they had a whole container of, of stuff. So that being said, yeah, the collectibles are hot. They're out there and people are making money off of it. And, um, I, I always think, you know what? I, I always said my the way I am. Uh, my inner my uh, autograph is not worth much. So get what you can. So. Yeah, I've seen you autograph stuff for people before, and you said, "Oh, you don't want me to sign that," and it would be something you know from like the old JCP days or something. Mm -hmm. And they'd say, "What do you mean?" And you'd say, "Well, it'll just it'll bring the value down if I'm on there." <laughs> you know, and I'm like, "You were you were thinking that to be funny. You were being sincere and." You know, you're just a dumb motherfucker in every way. And that's why we love you. Uh, so check it out. Butts and seats, I, uh, I cannot believe what's happened with like wrestling trading cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw, you know, there's Hulk Hogan cards that have been rated now that are worth in excess of $20,000, you know, Andre the giant and Ric Flair. And some of these wrestling trading card things are just going bananas and books. My God, I saw a Lou Albano book the other day that was like $800. I'm like, how is that possible? Wow. Uh, either way though, grab your piece of history right now, butts and seats, comic.com. And even at a more recent, uh, note, we have started to cover Jim Crockett's. I don't know why I keep doing that. We've started to cover Jim Cornette's, um, anniversary book for the midnight express. Right. And that book's been sold out forever. Well, the secondary market on that, a book that, you know, Jim used to sell for 20 or $25. It's going for two, three, 400 bucks now. Mm. it's unbelievable the the appetite for wrestling nostalgia and this is going to be another piece of that butts and seats comic.com go check it out and without further ado let's talk about why we're here we're watching world championship wrestling from 1986 i've got jim crockett on the brain obviously because this is in my opinion the greatest year they ever had uh, certainly creatively they're making some mega stars I don't think it can be debated that the rock and roll express are one of the top draws in the whole uh, industry at this point, obviously dusty roads is dusty roads and Ric Flair is Ric Flair. So we've got a ton of top acts and we're setting records everywhere we go. And we're going to continue our coverage as long as we can here on the WWE network. Eventually the rumor and innuendo is that everything will be loaded up on Peacock, but we're going to ride out these watch alongs as long as we can here. And then we have some fun sort of backup plans to keep everything 1986 fresh in our minds, right? Yes, we do. Uh, we always have a plan. That's one great thing. You're like, you're like the Russians. They always have a plan, buddy. Well, we've talked to the Kremlin and yeah. we've lined up some interviews, so we're ready 
<laughs> uh, to keep this going. So, uh, if our world championship wrestling, March 29th, 1986. And again, if it's not on your WWE network, a little birdie says it might be on YouTube. I'm actually watching it on the network. And so is Tony. So that's right. I've got Safari up. It's the, uh, is what I always use for the network. And it always lets me click and go into it. So as long as it allows me, I'm going to go for it. I don't know that the browser has anything to do with it. That would be like, you know, I'm getting more miles to the gallon since I st- stopped using the radio. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget. I was riding with my grandma when I was a kid and she said, Oh, sweetie, we're fixing to run out of gas. Let me turn off the radio. And I'm a little kid, but I looked at grandma and I said, I don't think those things are related. <laughs> She's like, well, you never know. I'm like, no, yeah, I'm I actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure I do. I was well, like, even at eight years old, I was a smart ass. I, I can top that. As, as you know, uh, I'm in my sixties. Yep. My mom was 41 when she had me. Ooh. Good for okay. Her. So I knew, I knew my, I knew my grandma and her mother who died at age 77 when I was like five years old, but I do remember her and grandma cat. That was her name. C A T T grandma cat and uncle dog <laughs> Grandma cat used to say, put some clothes on in front of the TV. Those people can see you. Oh God. Is this real? <laughs> yes. She thought the people on TV could see you. This is tremendous. So we're talking old school stuff now, right? So she was 77 and uh, I was, I was born in 1957. So in 1962, she was 77 to show you how old she was. So she was born in the 1800s. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was grandma cat. You know what? I'm going to start calling you that whenever you send me an email saying, our copy's not on here. Just orange. Get your shit together. <laughs> like buddy, scroll down a quarter of an inch. They're all in the same email. <laughs> How old are you? Grandma cat. That'll be what I call you next time. You did. You just sent me a text. How old are you? I said really old. Cause I went to bed at six 30 last night, <laughs> which I did. I went, went to bed at six 30, man. Gone me and the bug out. You know what? Good for you. Well, it's time for people to stop sleeping on Jim Crockett's 1986. Tony, do we have a, a fun little countdown this week? There it is right there. That's my alarm. It sounds a little scary, bro. Yeah. That's uh Harry Potter. Wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I can't believe this is real. You set an alarm for nine in the morning. Yeah. I always set an alarm for nine in the morning. Who said, are you like a rock and roll Nine in the morning is awfully late to have an alarm. No, not, not in this house. It's not. No. Like, you know, out here in the real world, people are setting alarms for like five 30. Okay. All right. I usually get up. I usually get up seven 30 or eight, but I always set the alarm for nine o'clock just in case I oversleep. Well, you don't have to get hot about it. I'm just trying to watch some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're giving me shit, man. You're like granny cat. Get out in front of that TV. You don't. What a great line that is, dude. That just, that tickled me. Yeah, that's true. I get, and I'm, I'm glad you said grandma because that reminded me of granny cat. Okay, here we go. Let's go to our special countdown this week. Three, two, one play. Woo! Oh, right now. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. Jones! Build that on me, baby. Because David Crockett, right here, right here, is the best black athlete in the world. Pistol, Pez, Wadley, my brother. And all you hear is the grunting, which yeah. is what it used to sound like when you walk past old Grandma Cat's bedroom. <laughs> Actually, she was a Granny Cat. Well. I'm just saying, granny cat, grandma cat, them <laughs> shenanigans fuck. That's been well established here on the show. Here we come. Bringing you great wrestling action. Sanctioned by the NWA, National Wrestling Alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one wrestling program in the world. That's World Championship Wrestling. I'm David Crockett. This is Tony Schiavone. We've got an exciting program for you. But, Tony, right at the top, we saw Pistol Pez Watley. 
and Boogie Woogie Man Jimmy Vance. He saw the look on Pez's face. And, David, that was just the tip of the iceberg. That is you right. were there. I was there. Something has developed between Pistol Pez Wally and Jimmy Vyant. We do not understand why it has happened, but we're going to talk about it with Pistol Pez Wally a little bit later on. I don't really understand. I, I don't either. We need to talk to him, and he'll be out here. So let's wait until then. Okay, we have all the top stars of the NWA here today, including the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, the World Heavyweight Champion, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, the Rock and Roll Express, the Road Warriors are here. And, David... We're not too far away, just a couple of days from the month of April. And with that comes the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament in New Orleans. We have a very special announcement and some news concerning that gigantic event coming up later on in this program. That's right. So let's go to the ring because we need to talk about that cup. In the ring. A man. Wow. David, David was really in a good mood there. Dude, he started out so hot. He was yeah. locked up. It was great. Yeah, you could tell he's a good mood. And and this is Tony Schiavone, the mark, right? When David was in a good mood like that, and when he put his hand on my shoulder, I'm thinking, I would I would stand there thinking, fuck, I'm announcing with David Crockett. That's just, I mean, that's just kind of the way it was. Just, uh, you know, I just uh, I just marked out for his, because I watched him, right? Of course, you grew up with him. Yeah. He, was your, he was the voice of your childhood. Yeah. Look, there's Miss Alabama in the front row. Did you see that? She's there again. Damn. She's coming on a regular basis now. You know why? Thanks to the dude, you got to work on your phrasing. Why? She's coming on a regular basis. You know why? <laughs> she's uh she, she's at TV on a regular basis. You know, defending these shows on a regular basis. <laughs> oh God! This is Ron Rossi. Uh, <clears throat> for some reason, that name rings a bell. Maybe it's because he's a good old Italian boy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's from your part of the boot. Yeah, look, you know, do you see him sell that gut shot? <laughs> hey, uh, what do you think of that Wahoo headdress to start the show? That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty iconic. Pretty iconic. You know how 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 big of a a mark I am for 1986 now? Yes, I just bought a he a Wahoo headdress. No, are you serious? There was one for sale. Uh, at the Paul Bosch estate sale a few weeks ago while we were all in Jacksonville together. Yeah. And I was trying to get somebody in Houston to go by there. Of course, it couldn't be Bruce. Bruce doesn't live there. Bruce was on location for SmackDown anyway. So I was reaching out, and uh, by the time my folks could get there, uh, they found that people had actually been spending the night out in front of the residence to try to get first dibs, and they wow. snatched up a bunch of stuff. And, and the two things I wanted most of all were a crown uh -huh. and, uh, that JYD wore and the Wahoo headdress. And I, uh, what was most important to me was the Wahoo head. Well, I'm happy to say that I got it. So oh, awesome. I don't have it here yet, but I did get it. And I got some other really cool stuff that I'll probably eventually gift to Bruce or Tom. And there you see it. That's going to be it for Wahoo. Boy, he just gave the business to Mr. Rossi here. Yeah. Wahoo was a, but Wahoo was a very good worker. He, he really worked light. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, here's Taz Jr. Or senior, as it were. To get Ric Flair, the hands of wants to get Ric Flair in a cage. And you say that's the only way to settle the issue. I think so. And I, obviously, it's a, a lot of people's opinion because I get a lot of fan mail. I like to say thank you for all your letters. I think the only way to solve the problem to come to, to an end is to have a cage match. And Ric Flair, you're looking at risky business. When you stand in a ring in a cage with Ronnie Garvin, now you were born with a big mouth and you've been running it all your life. It's a fact, but I was born with a heck of a right hand and I'm going to close that mouth. I'm going to close it for good. You see, somebody has to do the job and I'm the man for the job and I'm very well qualified to do it. You see, I came very close a few times. You ran out of the ring. You got disqualified. We won an hour. You, you're a 60-minute man, all right. But I'm going to tell you, risky business, serious business we're talking about in a cage match where everything goes. You can't run out. So where do you go, Ric Flair? You got to face the music. You got to face me. And that's music you ain't going to like because it's not going to be very soft for your ears. Now, you can't get disqualified. You go around the country defending your title and brag about how long you've been a champion. I'm going to tell you why you've been so long a champion. It's because you get disqualified. Now, in a cage, there's no disqualification. You can't run out. So there's got to be a winner. 
And you're looking at him. Ron Garvin, the man with a hand in stone. We're coming right back. That was pretty good promo. Yeah, that was good. I a couple of things there. He said risky business a number of times, which he has said leading into this. Dusty, that's a, usually a yeah. dusty phrase. So here we right. go. You want to talk about a promo? We'll come back to your risky business comment. But here's okay. some real risky business, Jim Cornette. Tournament ain't too far away. And everybody's talking about tournaments. And speaking of which, I saw Dale Brown here last week. With all respects to him, but Denny Crum is going to lead the Louisville Cardinals all the way this year, right straight to the top. They're going to win that tournament. Then there's going to be three sports legends from Louisville, Kentucky: Muhammad Ali, Denny Crum, and the Louisville Cardinals, and Jim Cornette. Because I'm leading the Midnight Express to the top of the tournament for the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup. And you know to do that, Tony, we got the Road Warriors in our bracket. That means if we win some of our matches, they win some of our of their matches. Then eventually we're going to meet the Road Warriors. We are the two premier teams in that bracket. And Road Warriors, I heard you got a little upset when I said that you flunked out of sixth grade eight times. Well, let me rectify that. They did have one major academic achievement when they graduated third grade. They were so excited they could hardly shave without cutting themselves. Road Warriors, you're dim, brother. You're Brain dead, and we are going to outsmart you and out sneak you and go right straight to the finals. And then, for once, rock and roll, rock and roll. I'm going to wish the Rock and Roll Express all the luck in the world because I want you to win every single match in that tournament, rock and roll. I want you to outlast all the competition in that other bracket, and I want you to get to the finals where you're going to face the Midnight Express and be humiliated and have the biggest prize in wrestling snatched right out from under you just like the rug. A million dollars and that cup and rock and roll i know you want to go into that tournament as the world tag team champions and we're facing them tony like the fighting champions that we are several times before then the rock and roll you're never going to see those belts you're never going to see that million you're never going to see that cup and you are never going to beat the greatest team in professional wrestling lover boy dennis and beautiful bobby the midnight express how much of that stuff do you think he would write down ahead of time and practice and and i'm not by the way i'm not knocking it i think it's awesome I, one of the things i've really never gotten about wrestling is it's like uh, amongst a lot of the people in the profession and fans it's like if you don't just if it doesn't just randomly fall out of your mouth oh we hate scripted promos mm -hmm. oh, i hate bad promos mm -hmm. if it's good scripting i like it so i i don't care if it's scripted i care if it's good and i feel like those same people who say, Oh, I, I miss when promos weren't scripted and it could be like, you know, like what the rock did everything. The rock ever said was scripted. Yeah. So th that's not a fair comparison. And so when I see Jim Cornette do that, it's like, and that's so good that he had to work on that and practice it. And I don't think is, you know, it's also, this is a weird industry where if you care about it, you're a mark. You know, like I don't. Yeah. I think that's dumb. Like, look at him over here working hard to make sure he does the best job he can. What a fucking goof! No, that's not, that's stupid, man. I mean, yeah. we put forth a lot of effort into this show, and and that's the reason it's successful. And there's a lot of other podcasts that aren't, and it's because they think you know effort is lame. No, yeah. Well, well, those people should have their head put in a toilet with a bunch of turds and flushed a couple of times. Okay. That's what they should do. And as a matter of fact, I would like a list of those names. I would be willing on my expense to fly to their house, shit in their toilet, put their head in it, flush it, and then walk out and leave. You're going to shit hey. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, that's what I feel about that scripting. I think scripting works. I'm sure Jim Cornette, thought about that i don't know if he wrote it down it may have been in his book i you know i read parts of it I didn't read the whole book that he that he wrote things down and but some guys were just you know we go back and we look at man those guys were talented they could talk dusty could talk rick could talk here's an here's something that i had learned and then i learned this i'm trying to and maybe it's not true maybe i I learned this in MLW, and I'm not going to say who told me this. It was one of the kids backstage. I don't know how they fucking knew. But they said, you know, the Ricky Steamboat, Macho Man, wonderful match from WrestleMania 3? It was written for Paige. Yeah. Yeah, so you've heard that too. Yeah, well, Steamboat's talked about it, and he yeah. made Savage for it, and then it became the most famous match that Steamboat ever had. So Right, So and, and they worked part of it, right, when they uh, – 
when they would go to the house shows, they would work through some of the spots. So, yeah. so not everything is off the cuff in wrestling. Right. Uh, but I'm proud to say the stuff that David and I did were off the cuff was off the cuff back then. Sure. Uh, because that's the way it was. I mean, we, we, they, they, and I, and that's one thing I, one of the things that I look back on fondly, but also one of the things that I remember at the time I was really excited about was, Hey, these guys trust me. Right. I, that's, that means a lot. Yeah, it does. And that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm getting now in AW, and, uh, what I got back, uh, back then. I mean, I get produced in AEW now, but some, but not a lot. And, uh, but back then, man, Tony, David, do your shit, man. I loved it. Speaking of guys doing their shit, it just, uh, look at, look, see Bobby. <laughs> that guy got up and Bobby went, whoa, whoa, look at him. <laughs> I love he's having fun. He, he, he always made, he always made it fun. He always did. And it shows you that, that maybe Bobby couldn't talk, wasn't the greatest uh, talker, but he had a great personality. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, sometimes I wonder like, how are those guys friends? You know, any random combination of wrestlers, right. but we've heard over the years <clears throat> that Arn Anderson and, and, and Bobby Eaton were best of friends mm -hmm. and I didn't really see it. And then you see him goofing around and having fun here and you're right. like, okay, yeah, that's our sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, we, uh, we've talked about this before. We had Bobby with us in Nashville on a, on a stage show and he was just like the kindest, friendliest Too guy. Nice for wrestling. Too nice. Yeah. For wrestling. Too nice for wrestling. So he was a great guy to tr here. He go Come on, get in the spirit. <laughs> you know, just like I was so Bobby just walked <laughs> over and made Tony Schiavone give him a high five. <laughs> he picked up his hand and slapped it against his. Right in the middle of the match. <laughs> and Jay and uh, Jim said, get in the spirit. Come on. <laughs> Good stuff. So, but Bobby was the guy, that kind of guy you like to travel with because he was, he was just good to be with. He was a nice guy to be around. And, uh, I'm sure that one of the reasons that Arn loved traveling with Bobby was, as you know, Arn is just really full of shit. Oh, big and, oh man. And so Bobby was a great straight man or a sounding board and laugh for everything Arn said. Well, we all did, but still, and listen, they're both two rednecks from probably the same area. Arn in Rome, Bobby from Huntsville. That's close. There's just a mountain divides them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's driving distance. Arn's going to be making an appearance over in Rome pretty soon. And he was telling me that. And I said, Hey, I might ride over and hang out. I'm yeah. Just, that'd be good. Please, please do. And it's yeah. far from you. So unless, you know, Lois has you, uh, the garage or something you should come hang out i run this fucking house buddy oh okay i run the when do you know what it's going to be as he announced the date she must be asleep for you say that so loudly yeah just do double you, check do, <laughs> you know what, do you know what it's going to be i'm not sure okay i'll let you know all right then i'll be there damn it when you say you run the house, you mean like you run the lawnmower, you run the vacuum, you run the dishwasher. If, if you're watching us on video, you see this, the perimeter of this bat cave here. Yeah. That's what I run. That's your domain. About three quarters way down the steps is where it <laughs> stops. Hey, let's do a little, let, let me ask an old school WHW oh, question. Okay. How often do you do the old five knuckle shuffle up there? Uh, none. Really? Yeah. I've stopped. <laughs> You quit, you quit whacking. Yep. Uh, do you remember your last whack? I don't. Was it this calendar year? No, really? Yeah, really. We're here at but, the end of March and you, but, so you're one quarter down whack free, but I can tell you this story. Okay. True story. I'm ready for this. Okay. So I'm in bed just last night. Oh, and I'm thinking, man, oh, I'm bigger. I'm uh, well, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm feeling frisky. Okay? Oh yeah. And I'm laying there thinking, oh boy, I haven't felt this way in a long time. This true story. And you know what I did? Texted rebel. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? I, this is like a midnight boom express. This is like midnight. Um, uh, I, 
recited the starting lineup for the 1972 Oakland A's that and won the World away. Series. That won the World Series. And you made it go away. Yep. So why are you trying to, is this like some sort of weird Catholic guilt or something? What no, doing? no, I just, it just, I didn't want to, I was, I'm just too fucking lazy. <laughs> to move your hand up and down? <laughs> Hey, Let's go to the interview. I have a lot of questions for this man, Pez Watley, who is with us now. David Crockett hey, and I were there. Look here, Tony Schiavone. Don't give me that mess around here. Let me tell you something right now. And at first, I want to talk to you, Jim and Bayard. Yeah, the boogie woogie man. Let me tell you, I got the prize. That's right. And I got it with the tool right here. You know, everybody been trying to do it. But the pistol man got it done. That's right. This belongs to Jimmy Valiant. And I'm going to tell you another thing. Jimmy Valiant, you ain't nothing but a snuff dipping, tobacco chewing, undercover heel belly anyway. And I spit on the hunky and I let him know that not only am I the best black wrestler around, I'm the best white one, the best Chinese one, the best Japanese. Whoop Mongolians! Don't say nothing to me, boy. You ain't got no culture, no way. Let, let's let me tell you another thing. I ain't through talking yet. I got something else to say. I ain't through yet, Jimmy Vallian. Show it to him now. Let him know right. that the whole world. Woo! Show what I right now. All right now. All right now. Jones, uh, build that army, baby. Because David Crockett, right here, right here, is the best black athlete in the world. Pistol Pez Wadley, my brother. Oh. What? What are you doing? Uh. Hey, Piz, 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 no, no, Piz, Piz, I'll tell you who black boy, I'll let you know Piz, who black boy is. What would, yeah, what would motivate a man yeah, to do something yeah, like that anyway? Yeah, right, but I'm going to tell you what. Tony Chavani, I guess you understand, boy, that I've been around here whooping on hillbillies every day. I whoop me a hillbilly for breakfast when I feel like it, and I'm starting off with the baddest hillbilly of them all. Jimmy Valiant, you talk about New York City. How can you talk about the Big Apple when you ain't never had a bite? Let me tell you another thing, Jimmy Valiant. When I get through with you, you go understand the whole thing. The story is right. Pass one too. I kicked him in the face and spit on him, and I cut his hair. Jimmy Valiant, I'm the baddest black one walking alive. Dig it, sucker. Okay, when we come back, we'll hear from Jimmy Valiant. Don't you go away. Listen, that was a controversial angle, I'm sure. But what a fucking promo. Uh, that was that was well done, man. I, it shows you the talent, how he could turn from a baby face one week to a heel oh. the next. Here we go. I don't, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, I, I can't explain the, the feeling I have inside my body. Uh, the hurt that I have. Um, I sat down... I, I, I try to think um, how I can explain this thing that just happened and, and there's no explanation. The hurt that I have in my body, uh, I can compare it to uh, if a man would come home. I mean, I'm telling you people, uh, my, my whole life, maybe uh, my heart is too big. Uh, I'll give my shirt off my back to a stranger. Uh, maybe I'll let people take advantage of me. I don't know what happened to my brother. And at this point, I'm still calling him a brother. Pistol Pez Watley, if you're sick, brother, if you had a seizure, if, if it's a mental problem, physical problem, come to me, man. 
I don't know what it is. I I, I, I have no pro All I know, brother, is, is I give and I gave to you and I give to my people. I give to anybody that I see. No, uh, I'm a loving person. And if there's a problem, brother, with yourself, man, I mean, uh, maybe I can help you. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Hey, hey, cut the camera, brother. That's the most I've cared about Boogie so far. This year. <laughs> well, that was uh, that was the real Jimmy Valiant. That's how he talks, obviously. Way, what they bleeped out was it would be like if a man came home, if you came home and found your wife in bed with another man. They that bleeped was, that out? That was not something they wanted to let out in 1986. And I get it. I mean, okay. we're not too far removed at this point from you know, married couples whenever you're telling a story of you know their life. They right. sleep in separate beds. On TV, I mean, so mm -hmm. right. I, I get where we are, but that was what was bleeped is, Hey, if you came home and you found your wife in bed with another man. Okay. I get that. <sighs> anyway. So I thought he was using the F bomb. So uh, anyway, back to Pez, he had just a couple of weeks before given us a great baby face promo. Yep. And now he just turned right on a dime, man. I think uh, he's a very, very underrated talent. I agree. And, and I think this is showing that. That he was, I mean, he called me boy. Yes. <laughs> he called him an undercover hillbilly. Yes. And then in a, a honky and a honky and then it was sucker. I yeah. mean, it's just good, good stuff. And it, I remember when the angle happened and I remember thinking, well, this is awfully weird that he would, that just the word black athlete would piss him off. Right. But you know, they couldn't get more controversial. No, I, that's it, right. It makes me wonder if they were thinking of being a little more calm, but it's not like you could say that in a complimentary way about your friends. I don't know. It's yeah, but th they wanted to tell some stories and, and really there's been no substance to anything that either one of those guys were doing. And now sure. all of a sudden it's like, well, hang on now. There's a little meat on the bone for this. Yeah. Story. Right. So using that. And the fact that he had the scissors in his back pocket means that he was going to attack him anyway. He had, he had had enough of him. So, cause I, I just, I, I remember vividly watching that and that, you know, it was worldwide. So David and I were doing the show and, uh, I just remember watching that going, why would the word black athlete piss him off? Um, don't know, but it's, it's a good start to an angle. Like you said, and well, I think the, the insinuation is it's like, you know, if you were to say, uh, well, it was she's, an, attractive. she's attractive for her age. He put a qualifier on it, right? Yeah, right, right. It, so, it's, no, I'm not yeah. a great wrestler because I'm a black athlete or I'm not the best black athlete. I'm the best athlete. And sure. you know, that's sort of what right. he was saying. I, I whoop Mongolians, which was funny. <laughs> <laughs> the Mongols are not here, by the way. Do you remember the Mongols? Yes. Oh no, man, I, I don't remember any of their stuff, but I saw their pictures and know who they are. I, they wrestled in mid Atlantic for a while. And I remember seeing them, uh, Brito, something like that. I don't know the Mongols anyway. Uh, wow. How about that? I'll beat Mongolians. Oh God. It was a great line. By the way, I need, whenever I start to cut you off, I need you to start yelling at me like pistol pals. Sucker. You no. undercover hillbilly. I ain't done talking and another thing. Tony <laughs> I mean, that was so good. Uh, it's almost as if you kind of wish you'd come back out. <laughs> yeah, he did a good job. It, that, that's pretty good. Uh, I like the fact during this match that, that Jimmy Garvin had precious smack old Don Turner the head repeatedly. There's not much that I wish we could do on this show that we can't do more than get pistol pez on the show, but unfortunately he passed away like 15 or 16 years ago. Man, that's bad. How great would that have been? If we could yeah. have had Pez do a run in here. Yeah. You know, uh, once Pez, uh, there's Ricky Lasser running the camera. Ricky ran, uh, wrestling cameras forever back. He, he ran uh, camera force in WCW all the way through the end. So anyway, and I think maybe he ran camera a little bit for, uh, TNA. Yeah. Uh, Pez and, uh, you know, when Pez became a heel, he teamed with tiger Conway. Right. And I always liked tiger Conway because eh, again, here's Tony Schiavone being a mock. I remember the team of Steve Kern and tiger Conway jr. 
They were uh, Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions, I believe, at one time. How about that? How about that going way back? Oh, here's a promo. This is Jimmy Garvin along with Precious and Wahoo is back here again today, gorgeous. Where? I don't, I don't know why you start them rumors like that. The man starts some nasty rumors every time Gorgeous J gets out here. Honey, spray the air. Because the fact is, it smells around here because everybody says Wahoo's back. Wahoo's here. Well, if Wahoo is here and Wahoo is back, well, then how come I can't see him right now? How come he's not out here answering my challenge? Hey, I'm not going to change my mind, you know. I'm not going to change my mind, Wahoo McDaniel. You're going to have to answer to me. You're going to have to answer to the real man of the NWA. You're going to have to answer to the major leaguer of professional wrestling. I mean, you're through living off these legends. You're through living off the ball of time and things like that. The fact is this, I'm getting real bored with the whole situation, honey. I can't believe the guy called him a coward. I finally got word to him that he could come down here and sign a contract. What happens? Everybody says, Wahoo's here. You better watch out. Wahoo's here. I I'm not afraid. Do I look afraid? The greatest wrestler in the world. Have I told you lately, Tony? It's not my fault, man. It's not my fault that Wahoo McDaniels is a coward. All over the country, wherever I go, if it's Seattle, Greensboro, Charlotte, Norfolk, Richmond, everybody's yelling for Wahoo. Then the people get real disappointed. And I'd like to take this time to apologize for Wahoo McDaniel for being such an embarrassment to the sport of professional wrestling. It's sickening. Where's your Jimmy Garvin and Precious? More action in the ring. Man, that's a great line, too. As we see Ivan Koloff about to take on a very young Ray Trailer sporting mm-hmm. that singlet. And you got Nikita in tow here wearing his mm-hmm. sweater, trying to look good for Miss Alabama. Mm-hmm. He's so glad she's coming on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> look anyway. at that, man. That's pretty cool. Ray locked up really well, did a shove. There, during that interview, there was a time you had mentioned this before on an, an earlier episode. There was a time now, especially on an interview, where I wish the guys would have stayed out of the ring until the interview was done. Oh God, it was ruining it. Yeah, because they kept chanting USA, USA for Ivan Koloff. Yeah, and if we would have thought about it, we would have said stay out of the ring until. But well, we we wouldn't lie the tape until the interview is over. Then come right out of the curtain. And then have somebody in the crowd go, Wahoo, Wahoo, you know, chant Wahoo's name. Yeah. That would have been better. But yeah, yeah. that, that kind of, and, and, but Jimmy stayed focused. That was good, man. It was, that's how, that's talent as well, staying focused. Look at Ray doing some stuff, man. This is, this is why he became Big Bubba. You're starting yeah. to see the push of Ray Trailer here as right. he's transitioning from enhancement to, hey, he's going to, he's going to be a player here. And yeah. I'm sure the, that, that whole conversation goes down something like this. Now I've been tonight, this afternoon, this morning. I need you to <laughs> give the big kid a little offense. We might have, might be doing something with him down the road. That's that may have been word for word. <laughs> don't don't just eat him up. You know, you still gonna get the win, baby. But get a little help from Nikita on the outside, make him look good from this Alabama. You know, she's coming on a regular basis, is what Tony's telling me. <laughs> she's been coming a lot lately. You undercover hillbilly sucker. Shut up. So good, dude. <laughs> undercover hillbilly. I don't think it was that undercover. <laughs> when you got a beard like ZZ Top, it ain't that yeah. undercover. You know, that's a shirt, man. Undercover hillbilly. Oh, for sure. I'm sure yeah. Steve Hoffman's already working on one over at boxofgimmicks.com. Yeah. I don't think it's Kaufman, is it? Oh, no, you're exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ryan. It's right. Sorry, Steve, Ryan. Steve, Steve Kaufman's our YouTube guy. Yeah. Who, by the way, is the person who put a little bug in my ear about YouTube. So I got Kaufman on the brain this morning. But no, yeah. it's our man, Ryan. You're exactly yeah. right. Ryan from Lynchburg, Virginia. Represent? Uh, I thought you're from West Virginia. Why are you saying represent? I'm from Virginia, motherfucker, you undercover hillbilly sucker. So there. Word of the day. Phrase of the day. Undercover hillbilly Man, I'd wear the shirt. <laughs> I'd wear it backstage. Look at that damn Russian. I bet you the Kremlin told him to do that. The, the Kremlin said, you get the man down, you choke him. You choke life out of him. Did you like my broken English-Russian accent I there? Did. 
Can you imagine how much fun Eddie Kingston would have with you wearing an undercover hillbilly shirt? <laughs> a lot. Hey, um, Eddie has a lot of fun with me anyway. I, since we're talking about AW, yeah, can I mm-hmm. ask a question that I'm, I'm, you're going to mad at, but you can uh, just at me and call me an undercover hilly or a hillbilly or whatever. Go ahead. Isn't it true? No. <laughs> It's not. But we've been talking a little bit about Tejo Khan being Tony Khan's uncle. That's it's not established now. Okay. Everyone listening to this knows that to be 100% fact. Mm-hmm. But That's I recently f- heard that Tony Khan's middle name is Cleo. Did I hear that right? That's wrong. You you uh, mix that up with maybe a member of our staff. Not sure, but it's not Tony Khan. Wait, Lauren Yaffe's middle name is Cleo? Like the lady hey, from the yeah. hotlines back in the day? Go on me now. Yeah, it would be Lauren Cleopatra Yaffe. Well, that actually makes sense, but mm-hmm. Cleo as a boy's name wouldn't make sense. So why would he be, why would no one would do that? So why would Tony? No, see, you, yeah, you're st- right. again, you're, you're starting shit that, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bet you this, I'll bet you this. There is not one. There's probably a lot of women who go by Cleo. Oh, of course. Like Cleo the hotline Patrick. lady. We know. Right. I bet you that there's not one guy out there with the name of Cleo. Not one. I'll bet you anything. Really? out there yeah i would i would bet you zero yeah i would i would bet some money on that i mean a dude named cleo i mean that's uh, you're just asking to get your ass kicked right yeah i know i know i so that's why you know uh it's like uh what we're gonna call this boy uh let's call him cleo and the mom would turn around and smack the dad in the mouth so you come up with something else like fred i mean it would be akin to having you know your middle name as mm-hmm. a you know what's your name uh john uh, no, Michael Jennifer Morris or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Jennifer is a middle name. Mm-hmm. Or like, or like Stanley Julia Shivani, something like that. You wouldn't, you didn't want to do Oh, that. maybe the worst would be if it was like Stanley Cleopatra Morris. Whew. Can you imagine? Mm. And then if well, you had to, if you had to just hear your friends, air quotes, roast you in front of. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people mm-hmm. I mean, you literally nice. couldn't do you know couldn't say or do shit about it no it'd be the yeah. worst it'd be like being pinned by having cold off after the russian sickle oh, well we we're gonna heat up the u.s title scene here you gotta watch out for it no i don't know how to watch out for anything the key to call off has to watch out for me for somebody that wants me so bad he sure just walked off this set and totally ignored me being out here you know it's real easy to say you're so tough well it's real easy to blind some blindside somebody come from behind sure knock ray trailer out with a clothesline when he doesn't know it's coming well knock me out face to face do something all by yourself forget ivan koloff forget the kremlin let's see what kind of guts are deep down inside you now you made a real special stipulation you said that you wouldn't meet me for this most coveted title right here unless i met your special challenge russian chain match well i'm no dummy i know that the russian bear real expert in those kind of matches i'm sure you picked his brain for every little bit of information you can get out of him to make you just as bad an expert as he is well i'm just as bad a cat as you've ever stepped in the ring with and if it's a chain match you want if you want to try to drag me all the way around that ring then go for it i'm not backing down yeah i'm real proud to be american i'm proud to be the united states heavyweight champion and if you think you can put me out in any kind of match that's fine go for it my friend because that's gonna end it all that's for you, Nikita Koloff. We're coming right back. Don't you dare move. Something I've really gotten a bigger appreciation for is mm-hmm. Magnum's promos, man. Yeah. He could do them. Yeah. What a what a tragedy. Man, what a tragedy. And yet another one. Here we go. This man with me made a big impression to everybody on World Championship Wrestling last week. Joe Nighthawk Coltrane. Hey, Tony, how you doing today? You know? I'd like to say uh, thank you to all the fans out there, you know, for all the letters and support that they gave me over the last week. I'd like to also say hello to all the wrestling fans all over the world. You know, it's a real nice day outside today, Tony, but, you know, I woke up feeling a little trouble. You know, I've been worried about my, my buddy, my friend, Pistol Paz Waller, you know. That is not the Pistol that I know. I've known Pistol for a long time, and, you know, Pistol, I'd like to say to you, if, if you need help, you know, come to me, and I'll help you the best I can. And Boogie, you know, I've known you for a long time too. And, you know, it's really, it's kind of downtrodden thing, you know, but 
you know, we're going to all, we're going to work this thing out, you know, Tony, and I think we're going to work it out, you know. Okay, Joe Nightcall Coltrane with us on World Championship Wrestling, back to the ring. What the fuck was that, Tony? That was a, that was a woman interview with 13 or 14, you knows in it. Dude, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, is this Jerry Jarrett and the sky's here? <laughs> it's because he started to say, hey, Tony, how you doing? You know, that's, oh, the, first, that's the first thing he said. I couldn't believe that's what we're starting with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, compare that to Magnum. There's no comparison. Uh, again, Magnum's, uh, wreck is a tragedy. He was going to be a big star. As you could see the fire in his eyes, he was believable. It was, you know, he, he's the one that he and I talked a lot because he's from Virginia as well. He's from the coast. He's from the tidewater area. And he and I talked, Magnum and I were very, very, we're very friendly. We talked a lot. He had a, he had a, had a great mind of the business. He really did. And that's why Dusty had him as the assistant booker back in the early nineties. Had a great mind for the business was, was really a, a pretty cool about it. And he and I talked about this and, and I, I bring this up. He said, there's, he said there was always the hook that brought you back as a wrestling fan back in the day when K Fabe was alive. Cause he said, most fans would think, nah, you know, this is, this is not real, but then there would be one thing that mm -hmm. they would look at and say, but that's real. Yes. And he said, that was the hook. They kept bringing you back. And he tried to be that hook. He tried to be real. He didn't try to say funny stuff. He was serious as he would, he would, he was doing the interview as a man who was really pissed off. The Russians would do. And it came across that way. And you thought Magnum and Nikita was real, were real. And the feud was real. And that's what made that, that best of seven, which is coming up here. Uh, a wonderful thing, a, a memorable thing. I don't know when it's coming up, but it's coming up soon. This summer. This summer. Yeah. The Great then, American Bash Tour. Okay. So there, none of it's on. I, I, did they put some of it on TV? Yeah. We, we, we had some on the network. Uh, who knows? You know, it might be up a hog's ass now. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll <laughs> somebody will uh, will rip it down and put it on YouTube or something. So that's 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 an undercover hillbilly line. It's up a hog's ass. <laughs> no, listen, that is a hillbilly line. My grandfather used to say that, <laughs> and the first time he said it, I looked at him and I said, "What does that mean?" He said, "I'll explain it when you're older." <laughs> That's an Arn Anderson line right there, isn't it? Yeah. The Bahog's ass. Arn <laughs> up with some random stuff. He still uh, does. Yeah. And he was grinning like an anteater eating a June bug. <laughs> what? What does that even mean? You, you dress up, my favorite. You dress up. He said, you look like a trash can with a hula, a hula skirt on. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even a mean? A trash can with a hula skirt on. <laughs> <laughs> or when I wore that all purple, you look like an Easter egg and you're the shape of one. <laughs> oh God. I just, you know what I need to do? I just need to, I just need to write down these lines or record them or something. Oh my he, God. That, that should be like a toilet book. Remember those yeah. were a thing back 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Just right. Like Anderson's book of one liners. Uh -huh. People would buy that. Yes. Oh yes, they would. Which reminds me, you know, you had said, and I thought about this before we started to roll tape here, you talked about, uh, how collectibles are big now. Yeah. I found down in the basement in the baseball room, two packs of WCW trading cards. Oh, how fun is that? Okay. But I think these are kayfabe trading cards because they can't, they're in a little white box. And written on it in ink, WCW trading cards. So these may have been like. Not released ones? Yes. Do not fuck around with those. <laughs> okay. We will okay. open them live. Okay. And film it. All right. And uh, yeah, we'll have some fun with those. Do not fuck around with those. I don't know what's in there. I, and I don't know how I got them. We're but gonna find out. It's going to be a little bit like. Um, Remember when Geraldo was looking for yeah. uh, the gangsters? Yeah. So that's yeah. what Al do. Capone's vault. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Gonna, you know, we'll open it up and it'll just be a bunch of fucking Terry Taylor cards. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just play the song. Wah, 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 yeah. Wah. yeah. Play, we are going to have a, uh, 
some game stuff coming to um, adfreeshows.com over the game. next month or so. Game stuff. I love game stuff. Like, like game shows. Oh, that's great. Like uh, Jeopardy. Like WrestleGamia. WrestleGamia. Yep. Who's going to be the host of WrestleGamia? Lauren Cleopatra Yaffe? <clears throat> um, okay. Efren? Well, you asked, and I cleared my throat thinking, oh, he's going to be mad at me. Ronnie Garvin, man, hands of stone here, buddy. Tony yeah. Zane, Tony Zane, another, I've mentioned this before, another uh, Rome kid. This is what hey. it would look like if Taz was stretching a boy named Cleopatra. We'll be right back. Welcome back to World Championship Wrestling. Ronnie Garvin's still just stretching his ass. <laughs> Come on, get up. Oh, holy shit. I think Ronnie's pissed off here. In real life, he'd be one of the last people I'd want to fuck with. Yeah, look, look, uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, I think those are shooting headbutts. Well, he shouldn't really be headbutting people. That's not cool. No, that's not cool. I mean, but he's, you can tell he's like, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's part of what he wants. To... Okay. Back to risky business. He used that term a lot. And I know Dusty would used it a lot, but Ronnie a lot. used it twice. And it's almost as if flair and they were going to name flair and Garvin risky business. Name that match. That doesn't happen until a year later. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's okay. they weren't thinking that far in advance. Mm. Stay down, Tony. Yeah, be smart if you would just stay down. I think mm -hmm. that might be my move if I was a an, an enhancement guy. You start beating the shit out of me, I'm just gonna lay down. As we told you a little bit later on in the program, we're gonna give you some information on the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup. We're cooking today. Here they are, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes and Baby Doll. You know what? You're going to have to call somebody. I'm getting ready to pitch a fit is what I'm going to do out here today. I have seen more green wrestling today. David has to be at his best today. The great wrestling going on. Let me tell you another thing. I want to go on record right now in the USA Today newspaper. Somebody was talking about professional wrestling. And talking about why, for instance, Dusty Rhodes is not in an NFL camp. Well, brother, I make more money per year than 95% of the quarterbacks in the National Football League. That's a good reason. I drive three Mercedes Benz. That's another good reason. I got a house in Los Angeles, California, one in Shelly, North Carolina, and a fancy hotel apartment in New Orleans. I had real women from show to show until God came along and settled me down. I have rode the wildest horses throughout this country to a standstill. I have looked the devil in the face on many occasions and spit in his eye. I have bit the head off of rattlesnakes. And you telling me that Tully Blanchard, Iron Anderson, and Ric Flair are going to stand on the same ground that Dusty Rose, the American Dream is, break my leg or whatever and get away with it? It ain't going to happen. Steal my belts. It ain't going to happen. You can have my silver studded saddle bar, but you can't have my soul today. You understand what I'm saying? You can tell a Texan, but you can't tell it much. So this thing I got in my hand right here, you see this? Right here, Wahoo McDaniel got an Indian strap. And Iron Anderson, tell that black good, you get to know this thing real well, cause your knock is gonna be shining when I put it on your head. You understand it, dog? You tell him like it's going to be. You know, Arn Anderson, we told you you were next. And you know what? I have been outside the ring when you have begged for mercy because of what this man has done to you. Because you are next. And it doesn't matter what happens in New Orleans because we do have a title shot. Even though, Arn, we do you have you about a week ahead of time. And Dusty, you know, you said you were going to break his leg. Why didn't you just break his jaw so he can't come out here and mouth off anymore? Iron Anderson, baby doll, once your jaw broke, consider it done, mama. The American dream, Dusty Rhodes, baby doll. We have more action. Don't go away. Consider it done, mama. 
How about him shitting on the uh, enhancement talent? Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I think that was, Tony Zane got beat up because apparently he was too green. Superdome in New Orleans, as you know, the one-day tag team tournament for the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup. 24 of the greatest tag teams of the world will be there. Also, as you know, Ric Flair defends the NWA World Heavyweight title on that night against the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Well, this news comes from Bill Watts and all of our friends at the Universal Wrestling Federation. That night, North American heavyweight title match, no disqualification as the champion Hacksaw Jim Duggan defends against Dick Slater. That event will be also during the night session as well that world heavyweight title match. And the night session starts at 7.30, of course, afternoon session at 2.30 with all the greatest wrestlers in the world. And that's all part of the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament. Here's a team seated number four and certainly one of the favorites to win the $1 million purse. You know, Tony Schiavone, I was listening to Dusty Rhodes. No man alive can talk better about himself than Dusty Rhodes. My hat comes off to you, because you are, my friend, the baddest of the bad. You bite rattlesnakes' hands off and all those things. But you know, Dusty Rhodes, I'm the man that put you down. One, two, three. So what does that make me? That makes me better than the baddest. So Dusty Rhodes, you think about that. Every night you go to sleep and every morning, every time you look at your kids, you think about that because I'm better than you and I'm better than you will ever think about being. Let me tell you something. I'm going to sit back here today and listen to a lot of things being said. Because Riley's got something to say that I want to listen to. But when I got to sit back here and listen to Baby Doll come out here giving people orders, it's enough to make me sick to my stomach. Now, she's not at home with her cabbage doll collection and Sam Houston and Jimmy Vade and some of Dusty's cronies sitting around her saying, Sammy, put this dress on this cabbage patch doll and do this to that one and change that diaper. Hey, this is not a tackling dummy at practice. We're into the real thing. We're into what's happening. And when you talk about the world television champion, baby doll, and you tell the American dream you want him to bust his jaw, this man is going to feed back to you, Mr. American dream, everything you want to give him and a whole lot more. Tony Giovanni, no woman alive threatens me where I come from. The women either make dinner or make babies. You understand, baby doll? So don't come out here dusty road. Take your skirt off, put your pants back on. If that's your situation, you run it. You understand? But the issue at hand, bull rope and scout matches. You want to tie us up? You and the big chief, fine, tie us up. We're going to show you what endurance is all about. And Taz Wiley, since you finally become a man, since you've turned into a man, maybe you'll have the distinct pleasure way on down the road of having a cocktail with a full horseman. Because trust me, this is what's happening along with our cousin, the world heavyweight champion, Rick Flair. Dusty Rhodes, make no mistake. When you're on the hit list of the three horsemen, eventually you're going to be back in a cast, period. Two of the four horsemen, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and, of course, James J. Dillon. Let's go to the ring. There he is. Boy, they are chanting Magnum big. Yeah. By the way, how great was Arn's line? When you're on the other side of the horseman, eventually you're going to be in a cast. Mm, is that something? Good stuff. What that you, is good. Are, JJ cans at your house right now. What do you? Yeah, doing? this this can here. Uh, it's empty. I'd like to go get another one, but I can't. Well, yeah, you can. No, 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 Lois won't. Lois won't, and Lois won't bring me one. So, well, I thought you were in your household. I do, but but she won't because she would be on camera, and she doesn't want to be on camera. I see. So since you run your household, why don't you run downstairs get your ass another one? Because we're taping, and I respect the tape. You yeah. undercover hillbilly motherfucker. We're gonna play a bunch of notice, stuff. notice notice how I uh had motherfucker. That was our Magnum's match is already done. Let's listen to these anniversaries. Acknowledge the 64th wedding anniversary <laughs> of Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Antonio Caravaggio of Newcastle. Mr. Caravaggio is 91 years of age. He and his wife have been married 64 years. Congratulations, all of us in World Championship Wrestling. We love to hear from you. Right to us, World Championship Wrestling, 1250 South Omni, Atlanta, 30303. And also, happy birthday to Kath Bining of Van Wert, Ohio, from all of us in World Championship Wrestling. Let's bring in now number two seated team in the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament, Offensive Plus, Magnum TA, and Ron Garvin. You know, 
It's a great thrill to be a part of this first Jim Clark Senior Memorial Tag Team Tournament to begin with because it is such a great event. Being held in the Superdome there in New Orleans, expecting capacity crowds. There's a lot of stiff competition going to be there. There's going to be people like good friend of mine, Terry Taylor, teaming up with Steve Dr. Death Williams. You got the Kiwi Sheep Herders. You got the toughest tag teams from all over the world coming together for a million dollar purse, the greatest purse ever handed out in professional wrestling. Well, Ron Garvin and myself are not exactly an established tag team. You know, we haven't had a whole lot of time to spend the ring together, but we're putting our minds together for this thing, our combined effort, combined effort to go out there and win this first tournament, because that is going to have to go down the history books as a milestone in professional wrestling. Ron Garvin's got the knockout punch. I don't think there's any more intense professional wrestler in the world anywhere today, and I'm really glad to have him as my partner. Well, Magnum, I'm glad to have you as a partner because I tell you, you're going to stand there and you're going to go 100%, and that's all you can expect out of somebody. So go 100%. And believe me, I've been watching him, and he's successful doing it. Now, I'm very excited about the situation because it's a lifetime dream to, to wrestle for a million dollars for the James Crockett Memorial Senior Cup. I mean, it gives you a butterfly in your stomach. It's a Super Bowl of wrestling. As far as I'm concerned, we're competing against 24 teams from different countries with different style, different strategies. I mean, it's going to be really something to see. And I think the combination of Magnum T and Ronnie Garvin has got to have a very good chance of coming out the winners. I think we've got an excellent chance. And one special note, Nikita Koloff, the belt's still here. And the challenge is still up for me to you. Magnum T.A. Ron Garvin, certainly one of the favorites in the tag team tournament in New Orleans. Let's go to the ring. What do you think of your little Johnny DJ voice there? It's terrible, isn't it? Dude, you were doing such a put on there. <laughs> That's how that. <clears throat> All right. What? I did that because I was in transition mode. <laughs> you don't believe that. Wait, you, you were becoming a woman? What do you mean? No. <laughs> you gonna name yourself Cleo Shavon? Uh, <laughs> Boy, that all worked for today, didn't it? <laughs> just it's like Sorry. Johnny. It was just right there. I had to do it. It's like George Carlin coming back to the same joke. <laughs> okay. No. Um I have in my possession, in my attic, I know that's there. A reel-to-reel -reel tape, big silver reel-to-reel -reel tape of the first time I ever recorded my voice. Really? Yeah, ever. It was for a project in college. And I'm telling you, it sucked. I was hayseed, talking like this. Undercover hillbilly. Undercover hillbilly was just... Running my words together, just I couldn't pronounce shit. I was terrible. I took that tape to Tom Delaney, Channel Three Sports Director, the big television station in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and I wanted to work with Tom. And Tom said, "Well, let's hear you." And I put that tape on, and I could read his face. And then he cut the tape off, and he said, "You have a lot of work to do." And I did, and I worked on it. And so that is me working on my voice, a voice that a mere five years prior to that, six years prior to that, was the drizzling shits. So I worked on it, and I developed the voice, and it, it, of course, it, it eventually left me, uh, kind of. But that was uh, really, that's the true story. That's how it happened. So it was a real phony, fake-ass voice that – that became part of me and it just fuck. I hated it <laughs> now that I listened to it. So that was me in transition mode from undercover hillbilly to, to uh, hillbilly out of the closet. So to speak, Does that make any sense? Yes. Yes. I also want to say Mr. Caeccio, who we wish a happy anniversary to. Is now 126 years old. <laughs> hey, here's the thing. I'm so just think. excited. I'm going to make an executive decision here. Okay. If you would like for us to read your anniversary announcement <laughs> next week here on WHW, just tweet us at WHW Monday and be sure to use hashtag WHW anniversary. If you tweet us at WHW Monday and use the hashtag WHW anniversary, 
we'll make sure that Tony Schiavone wishes you and your loved one a happy anniversary right here on the program. Well, you know, Lois and I have a big one coming up this year. Is this going to be 40? 40. Yeah. That is a big one, dude. Yeah, that is a big one. My parents just did uh 40 last year. Uh, their anniversary is on April 20th. It'll be oh. uh, their 41 year anniversary, mm. which means that I'm turning 40 in like three months, Tony. So your parents didn't waste any time either. Oh no. Those no. Thompson's fuck. Yeah. Hey, um, my 40th anniversary, we're going to do it like a family or my anniversary, my 40th birthday. We're going to do like a family deal. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to do like a guy deal. Mm-hmm. Hypothetically, that'd be something you'd be into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do need to say this. I'm as we talk right now. Uh, this coming Friday, yep. I'm getting the vaccine. Oh, good for you, dude. Yeah. Congratulations. Especially on uh, stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Georgia now is 55 and over. There you go. And so I made an appointment and it's going to be a dual shot one, one day. And then three weeks later, another shot. I have the antibodies. Yeah. I found out I never tested positive for COVID ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I knew I was sick and I knew I had it because, uh, people in my family had it, but it, I never tested positive, which tells you how weird all this is. Yeah. But then when I went to the AW show in Jacksonville, you know, you got to get tested to go through mm-hmm. told me I had the antibodies. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's right. So anyway, uh, a slingshot suplex, <laughs> you know what that means? Mm-hmm. It means it's over and Tully Blanchard, the national heavyweight. Let me do my fake voice. Tully Blanchard, the national heavyweight champion, is your winner. And we're going to go to the, uh, oh, here's Precious. Here is Precious with that gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. Gorgeous is all tied up right now. And I just came out here to see if Wahoo McDaniels is around like you said he was. Where is he now? I don't see him. You see him anywhere, Tony? No. I just thought I'd take a look around because you know what? He isn't anywhere to be found. And you know what else? I don't think he's got the nerve to show up out here. There he is, precious. Wow, look at this. You come looking for some trouble? What is your man sending you out here to do a man's job? I came out here to look for you myself because we don't need a man to do a man's job. I'm not very hard to find. I've been here for two weeks. I can't find a higher hair when I'm here. I don't believe that. We saw you down at the reservation just last week. And you know what else? If Gorgeous was here, he would beat your brains out. And you know what? What is this? Amy? This is a bogus hat. This is a, not a real Indian hat. I don't think you're a real Indian anyways, Wahoo. I think Gorgeous would come out here, if he wasn't busy, that is, and beat you brainless, Wahoo. In fact, he wouldn't even need my help. And you know what else? I don't think you got it in you, boy. I don't think you got it in you to beat up gorgeous Jimmy. Gorgeous will beat your brains out right there in that ring, Wahoo. It won't take you very long to find out, and I hope you're with him. I hope I'm with him, too, because I want to witness him beating your brains out, Wahoo. In fact, I think I'm going to split this thing right now. Excuse me. Dude, she did a pretty good job there. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. She knew yeah. how to be hateable. She was good at that. Yeah, she's... uh. Well, I love Precious. Action, World Championship Wrestling. All the top stars of the NWA are with us here today. Now, we talked about, of course, Ron Garvin wants to get the World Champion Nature Boy Ric Flair in a cage. Well, here he is, the heavyweight champion of the world, Nature Boy Ric Flair. Well, Tony, let me tell you exactly how it is. At this time of the year, one of the biggest sporting events to ever take place anywhere is the final four. The four finest college teams in the country get together and battle it out to see who's number one. Well, last night, the Nature Boy whoo, was in Daytona Beach driving the women wild. And when I walked out of Penrods last night with a bevy of beauties and headed for the Hilton Hotel, I had my own final four. And this morning, when I eased down that elevator and headed to Eastern Airlines, I gave old Miss Indiana the nod. So, darling, if you're watching, you got the blue ribbon. Woo! 
Now, New Orleans, Dusty Rhodes, you got your last shot. They tell me it's going to be capacity, capacity audiences at the Superdome. You know why? Because the greatest wrestlers in the world, I'm talking about the Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal. I'm talking about the Midnight Express. I'm talking about the best team, my cousin, Arn Anderson and Tony Blanchard. I'm talking about the National Wrestling Alliance. And then I'm talking about Ric Flair walking that aisle, woo, looking as only he can look, defending what we know to be the most coveted trophy in all of professional sports. The World Heavyweight Championship. Dusty Rhodes, you got your last shot. Now, let's talk about one Ron Garvin. Come in here, David Crockett. I see you out here all flustered week in and week out saying to the whole world what you have a right to do. Then Rick Flair, you might not make it to New Orleans. Ronnie Garvin might be there. Magnum might be there. Nikita Koloff might be there. Well, David, as sure as I'm standing here, woo, just as custom made as Michaels can make me, I'm telling you right now, I'll bet you $100,000 right here that I make it to New Orleans because the only man right now on my way is Ronnie Garvin. Kind of an abrupt end to that promo, isn't it? It's almost as if they edited that. Yeah, that was an edit there. Had to be. Yeah, right. Yeah, they wouldn't ever. I, I don't know. No, they wouldn't cut him off like that. No, they wouldn't. It's just like, uh, and I don't know why uh, the the network would cut him off. Maybe he said something re really out of line there. I don't know. Like, do you know how large my dick is, or something like that? Which would have made you edit it out? I would think. Wait, did he say? Did he say stuff like that on TV back then? Come on. No, he didn't. But that's the only thing I can think of. You bring out you bring out the worst of me a lot of the times. You know that. Well, what, what did I say? Yeah, you know you do. Just the way you are. Just my mere presence. Yeah, you, the way you've led me down this path. It's been a good path. It's been a profitable path. <laughs> but here's the deal: you had to make a deal with the devil. Somebody uh, came and met with you at the crossroads, and they said, "Go to Shivani. <laughs> We're going to get you out of the drive-through. <laughs> We're going to get you off the back of the bus." <laughs> We're going to get you back where you belong. <laughs> You're going to make more money than ever. You're going to start to have feelings down in your groin area. <laughs> You'll have to recite the <laughs> Oakland A's starting I, lineup in order to I, 1972 world series. Yeah. yeah. You already know what the plan is, Tony. You're going to make more money than you ever imagined. Mm. You're going to remodel your house. You'll get rid of all the goddamn dog hair, but you'll have to give away part of your soul. You're going to have to talk about penises and Klondike Bill and glass bottom boat rides and shitting on coffee tables. <laughs> and before he could finish, you said, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> when he started, I said, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which reminds me of something. When we talked about the Oakland A's, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to try to find them on as we're going along here. Um, the names of these of our some of our listeners, our fans, because uh, here we go. Paulie B. I'll mispronounce some of the names. James Cahelio, Frank Bruno, Arios Archio, Orocho, Brooke Bauckham. I love you, Brooke. TJ Stevens, Michael Amend, Michael McClanahan, Mark Nelson, Antonio Santos, and uh, Brandy Wagner from Alaska. They all went together and paid for a cameo of Reggie Jackson, my favorite athlete of all time. Not only my favorite baseball player, my favorite athlete of all time. What? They paid for a cameo for Reggie to say hello to me. How about that? And at the end, they gave him the line. He said, "We're Tony, we're desperately out of the time. The tape machines are rolling. You gonna play it? Uh, I I probably need to put it on uh, on Patreon. Uh, do you want me to play it here? The audio? Sure. Uh, let's see if All I right, can get here, it. Here's Rick. 
So maybe they didn't cut him off. Maybe the plan was for him to stick around and do commentary. Yeah. Maybe so. I love that you just immediately went to his penis. Yeah. Well, again, that's hanging out with you does that. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'm not a fan of playing cameo for online. As you know, it's what, uh, got me off cameo. So, uh, but anyway, he said this, uh, he said this line and it it meant a lot. It it meant, uh, words, you know, have you ever met Randy? No, had a chance. Two things. 1969. I went over to get his autograph. He wouldn't give it to me. Mm. He reached for a kid to, it must've been one of the baseball players, kids right there. He reached across and bumped me. So I remember that distinctly. He was real young. And then I, uh, I was walking in underneath the, uh, at legends field and where they, where the Yankees have spring training. When I was working with the Braves, I was walking underneath the stadium. There's a, a breezeway underneath the stadium and here he came and there I went and it was just me and him. And I remember thinking, you know what? I heard he was an asshole. Yes. So I don't want to say anything to him to get him riled up. No, to make, to make me think bad of him. Right. I want to, I want to remember Reggie as hero. my hero. So I just, I blew up, blew right past him. So never met him, but this, uh, this meant a lot, man. No, it's very thoughtful and it shows what a cool little community we've built. Right. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, adfreeshows.com. I mean, it's a big group of wrestling fans who have all become friends and the support that I get from my wrestling group chat. I mean, we're talking to each other all day, every day. Mm-hmm. It's one of the, the big reasons I wanted to create ad free shows, especially since we were in a pandemic and, and where there were stay at home orders and shelter in place and all this stuff. So there was a lot of folks who really leaned on our little wrestling community as a, a way of interacting with the real world and not just be, you know, stuck in, in, those same four walls. Anyway, I got to meet Reggie in November of 2014. Uh, there was a big autograph signing in Houston, I believe. And, um, I don't know why I had, I was recruiting a branch or something, but I was out there like a few days before or a few days after and, and Rick was booked and he said, Hey, you should come hang out. We'll have a big time. And I said, man, it's funny you say that because I'm going to be not too far from there, blah, blah, blah. So we wound up hanging out and I got to meet a lot of sports folks, Mm -hmm. but Reggie Jackson came right over to me and commented on my watch. He's a Rolex guy and I was wearing a Rolex and he was too. So he's putting over my watch. Like it's some big shit, but the reality is he's got a now discontinued, uh, white gold submariner. Oh, here we go. Big movement. About those turkeys in the audience. You know what? As you know also oh very well, I am probably the finest connoisseur of beautiful women. I'm talking about women with full sweaters, you know, the big girls. So one of my big girls the other day asked me <laughs> to give you this. And she said, <laughs> she said, tell Ricky Martin, if you may, to give this to one of his little teeny boppers. So, How about that, sport? In other words, I like the big girls, and you like the little teeny ones. <laughs> I mean, you come out here, brother, you talk about all the things that you've got and what you're going to do. But it wasn't too long ago, Rick Flair, and all these nice people right here stood behind you and made you what you are today. Now, without these people out here, you're nothing, and I'm nothing. Are you trying to tell me that when your name is Ric Flair and you're the world champion, that you got to have a whole building full of people that carry on. Wherever I go, I don't care if they love me or hate me because I love myself and I know that I'm the best player. Huh? 
God, the fans are into this, man. Dude, that was a big moment. Man, that's a hell of an angle. I had chill bumps. That was, boy, the, and not only, you know what added to it? Fucking David Crockett, buddy. Yes, he was he excited. Was, he was cheering with the fans. He was cheering yeah. with the fans. If you can't appreciate that, then you don't know what the fuck's going on in your life. By the way, I want to mention, uh, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, boy, they could have, they could have did him in a singles with Flair. They did. And uh, it drew big business. And there's mm -hmm. some famous photo out there of Ricky Morton with the big gold around his waist. Mm -hmm. Of course, he never actually won it, but it was a nice little photo op. And it's a cool moment in wrestling history. This is, the, of course, the 29th. Later that day, they're going to be at the Coliseum in Greensboro. 12,239 fans. Uh, Flair's going to beat Garvin in a steel cage match there. Uh, the next day, they would do a double shot, a matinee show in Savannah, and then that night, they're in the Omni. But it's not the sellout you would expect. Only 5,300 people there, and we had Dusty and Wahoo teaming up to take on Arn and Tully in a chain strap match. We also had Magnum working with Nikita, the Midnights working with the Rock and Rolls, and on top, it's Flair and Garvin in a steel cage match, but only 5,300 there. Why do you think that is? If you had to guess, was Garvin not believable to Atlanta yet? No, I, I think you need to go back and look at, at the Omni, right? And take a look at all the fans that we had in the Omni. We were still in the minds. I, I may be way off base here, but this is my thought. We were still in the minds of the people at Carolina based company. And you mentioned 12,000 in Greensboro. We did big business in Greensboro and in Charlotte. Yeah. And the big markets in the mid Atlantic, but the Omni, even though it was viewed as the Madison square garden of the South, the Omni was not one of our bigger draws, right? It, it never was. It, it was, we had some big houses, but we, we never did have gigantic Greensboro type. Greensboro was our place. Greensboro was the place for Jim. And I know Charlotte was, but Greensboro was the biggest venue in the Crockett territory. And they always ran big shows and did that. Listen, I had talked about my fandom and if I can find in my ticket stubs from the Greensboro Coliseum, that was for us, the Mecca of wrestling, because we knew we would see blood. You wouldn't always see blood in a spot show. We knew we could see a, a, a belt change hands. And so Greensboro was a place. So I, I think we were, we were seen as a as a North Carolina based promotion and we weren't Georgia championship wrestling. Right. That may have had something to do with it. May have turned them off. But we had the time slot and we had guys that they knew. Ron Garvin had wrestled in Georgia, Wahoo McDaniel, Flair. You know, there was world championship wrestling before Black Saturday, and a lot of these guys were there. So I, I, that's the only explanation I have. And not only that, the guys had to go work Savannah and then drive four hours, most of the guys four hours to uh, the Omni that night. So that was, that was a healthy day for him. The next day on the 31st, it's a joint show in Baltimore between Jim Crockett and the AWA. So we mm -hmm. had like uh, Kurt Henning and Scott Hall and tag team action there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main event is Flair and Dusty Rhodes on April 1st, April fool's day. We're in Canton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got uh Tejo Khan working with your boy, Don Carnoodle. I know everybody was wondering, we're going to talk about him this week. Mm -hmm. uh, the next day we're in California, Pennsylvania. That's a real place. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the following day on the third, we're in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania on the fourth, we're in Roanoke, Virginia, again, with flair and dusty on top. Uh, and then we did a, a TV taping and, and then we're back in Atlanta here on April 5th. So 
that's where we are. And we see Ivan Koloff here cutting the promo. Let's jump in. 100%. April the 19th in New Orleans, $1 million is coming over to the Koloff family. Oh, Road Warriors, we'll admit it. You are up to this time are the most powerful team that we have ever met. You are fast, you are strong, and you know you're wrestling. But you could get injured and that would put you out of the tournament altogether. And we're going to make sure of this. Now, Magda DA, you have signed a contract to meet nephew Nikita. Any place in the world, what's your chain match? And Nikita is ready for you. Let me tell you a little bit about what your chain match rules, if you don't already know. Here is chain, 12 pounds, 12 feet long, each end. Locked to each other's wrist, one end to you, one end to nephew Nikita. Whichever man can beat the other one up so that he can drag him all around the ring, tucking all four corners consecutively, he is the winner. And you're looking at the winner, Magnet TA. Then, you Americans, Magnet TA, Jim Cocker promotion, you will have to meet the Kremlin's turn. And then I speak. You know what the kind of man Nikita like most in the Russian chain of man. Is I put around you now and I joke and I joke till you have a fall off and nobody can stop Nikita. You say you bad luck like Nikita. No, you only think you bad. Nikita got a lot of pride in the Russian chain man. Ivan and Nikita Kolov, and we have more action right after this timeout. Nikita, not the best promo. No, and you know, uh, I, I didn't get it back then, but it's pre pretty obvious he wanted to dress up for his girlfriend. Yeah. Which was the wrong thing to do. Oh, here's Show a new promo. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You held back your anger, though, but she certainly upset you. Well, you know, I feel this way, and I know a lot of people feel this way. At any time a woman steps out of her place, then I feel like when she's trying to do something a man is supposed to be doing, then she is no longer a woman. Now, a lot of people will tell you I've mellowed a little in the last couple of years, but I'm not sure how much I have mellowed. Now, Jimmy Garvin wants to send a woman out to do a man's work. He's here in the studio. I've been here two weeks in a row. He gets out here. He wants to say bad things about me. All he has to do is get in this ring and beat me, and he's on his way. He knows that. So what is holding him up? I'm just saying one thing, Jimmy Garvin. I'm here, and I'm here to stay. And to get by me, you're going to have to get by me to start a name for yourself. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm here, and I'm not going to let anybody walk over me. And I'm not going to promise you that I can contain myself or restrain myself because I tell you one thing. I put the G and get even, and I'll tell her precious one thing don't get in my face again because i'm not going to be responsible for what i'm going to do chief wahoo mcdaniel let's go to the ring chief wahoo mcdaniel let's go to the <laughs> ring i'm transitioning folks say hello to miss cleo <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i feel it was, you know why it wasn't the greatest interview in the world but it was believable it was believable yeah it was like you know you he said, I'm not going to be responsible for what I do. And everybody was saying, fuck, absolutely. Don't fuck with that guy. No, I can't imagine that being a good idea. Yeah. Well, here's the uh, latest uh, uh, demolition session, if I can use that term, with a nod to Bill Eady and, and Barry Darso. They are just demolishing these two. Where's the partner? Oh, there he is on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking out. Get the fuck back in, kid. <laughs> Good God. Oh man, I'm telling you, I, I don't think, I don't think they worked that shoulder breaker. No, oh, or that. Oh. Jesus Christ! There ought to be paperwork involved with that. Uh, uh, <laughs> that guy on the outside is so glad. Okay, I'll go in there. Look, look, at look at this, dude. Oh, God. All right, let's hear some grunting. Oh, you're geared up for this one day, gentlemen. Hey, let me tell you something, Tony Schiavone. From Jim Crockett Sr. to the Road Warriors, you got two different generations. You got Jim Crockett Sr., who started from a nothing wrestling organization. He built himself the biggest wrestling.
wrestling empire in the world. That's just like my brother Hawk and myself. We started off as two punk kids in Chicago, getting slapped around by bigger kids, fighting gangs, to finally say we had it enough. We built ourselves up, Tony Giovanni, to be tag team of the year. Not once, not twice, but three years in a row. And we're rated number one today in the world, aren't we, Tony Giovanni? You certainly are. So it's only right that we're the one, number one seed in the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup. Ain't that right, Paul? That's right, Tony Schiavone. Some things need to be brought out here. Everybody knows the world over that these men have been world champions and held national titles, but little do they know that this means more to the Legion of Doom than anything else, and that is revenge. And revenge is what motivates these two men. Revenge and a fight. Somebody that won't back up from them because they don't back up from anybody else, and that's what motivates us in the past and in the future. Tell them, Hawk. Hey! You want to know what Road Warrior logic is? Yeah. I'll tell you what it is. I can remember days when me and Animal were in Chicago, the South Side, getting in three or four flights a day. So we got a big tournament in New Orleans. We've been primed all our life to fight. We were bred, born, and put on this earth to fight. And we are going to walk away out of that Superdome yeah. with that cup, all that silver. And if anybody's got any doubts about it, then you've got brain damage, brother. Because the road warriors are number one. And don't you forget. There's a lot of crying babies out there. Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, everybody's crying. Saying they should be the number one seed. We're the number one seed, and we're staying out. If you're going to cry about it, you know right where we are. Anytime, any place, we'll take you on and prove we're the number one seed. I heard a couple of people talking about Jimmy Coronet, and I heard them say, you know, Jimmy Coronet, he's a liar. He's a cheat. And he's a thief. I went in, I interjected, and I said, you're talking about Jimmy Cornette? They said, yes. I said, well, he sure has improved, hasn't he? Because that's what you are, Jimmy Cornette. You're a liar because I've asked for this match many times. You're a cheat because you weaseled your way into the NWA belts. And we're going to get you. Gracious Paul Ellering and the Road Warriors, they are the number one seed in the tag team tournament for the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup. We've had a lot of great things go on here today, David, and I know Ric Flair, for one, is going to think twice before getting on Ricky Morton He's again. still back there storming around. Okay, here's a reminder. We'll see you next week for the very best in wrestling, the NWA, right here on World Championship Wrestling. Well, what do you think? We had to fill some time there, which was unusual. Not much. Yeah. Just a line. Uh, I just uh, the the uh, Hawks presence is amazing. Yeah, it just it just really is. Um, and he was scratching his head there a lot too. I don't know what that was about. Uh, but anyway, uh, another another good show, another show chock with some uh, some memories of of stuff that we did, and um, we're heading to some good stuff here. Yes, we are. Uh, obviously. And, of course, now we, we're we going to go into April next week. And, and once again, uh, I've still got it right now on uh, on my computer. And hopefully you do, too. And can watch along with us. Really excited about all things 1986. Don't forget, you can watch along on the WWE Network. You get all these shows early and ad-free over at adfreeshows.com. And, of course, WHW Monday as a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And it sounds like the Reggie Jackson cameo will be over there. Uh, but we've got lots of fun stuff coming your way, man. It's going to be a great year. Even if we lose some watch along uh, possibilities here, uh, we'll still fill it with all things JCP from 1986. But right now, Tony, it looks like it's about that time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Dave Silva versus Cassio Kid in a belly bump for the 
Hill undercover hillbilly championship of the world. As the match gets started, out from under the ring comes Cleo Morris. He's got a foreign object. He hits Dave Silva in the head. He breaks a fucking tooth. He goes down. Cover one, two, three, and Cleo is the undercover hillbilly champion of the world. And I said that in a phony voice. We'll see you next time on What Happened When. On Wednesdays, we're on Westwood One. But on Mondays, we are on Patron. Patreon.com forward slash WSW Monday. And of course, adfreeshows.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.